This morning, I'm going to show you Yankee Prepper's top five knots. Okay, five rope knots that are my favorites. And I'm even going to throw in my favorite fishing knot. Now, there are a lot of different knots out there. And there are different ways, several different ways to tie the same knot. And some knots are very good for specific situations. But these top five knots that I've picked for you will generally get you through anything. They'll function in any situation. So if you're an avid outdoorsman or adventurist or uh, you know you like canoes or boating, these knots will get you through almost anything and they're well worth the time to memorize. Every man, every man should have some knots memorized. These are what I would recommend, but definitely should be mandatory for any prepper. Tying knots is almost a lost art in our culture today. You know, I. I think it uh, should be mandatory in high school to learn a certain set of knots uh, like this because it can make such a difference in the rest of your life. You know, you can learn these knots in maybe 30 minutes and it will make a huge difference for the rest of your life. may even save your life one day if you know how to tie a proper knot. Uh, it's endless what you can use this skill for. Okay, before I start this though, I have to do a small disclaimer, just 30 seconds here. I apologize real quick to the majority of my viewers. I have to put this in for a small minority of YouTubers. <clears throat> this disclaimer is just saying that these are my top knots, Yankee Prepper's top knots that he's putting on his channel. I don't care what your top knots are. I don't. I don't even like your knots. In fact, all of your knots suck. Now, it's just my opinion. It's just my opinion, but your knots suck. You probably don't even pronounce not right. You you probably pronounce it cannot. So this isn't about, just to make this clear, this isn't about your knots or your favorite knots. This is Yankee Prepper's top five knots. Thank you. First one I'll show you is the bowling. In fact, the first four I'm going to show you are anchor points. Uh, they're anchor point knots. Uh, the last one I'll show you are reef knots. And reef knots are used to uh, join other ropes together. The bowline is one of the most common knots in the world. In fact, they call it the king of knots. The way I like to remember it, make a B. So you're making a loop, you're bringing it around and making a B. Put it around your anchor point, bring it into that loop from underneath, then bring it over. Again, bring it under. So lead under your main, then take your lead rope, and your loop rope and the main rope in your in your hands and tighten and if you got a, you've got a bowling that's a great anchor knot in fact the more stress that you put on this the stronger that knot becomes next one I'm going to show you is the taut line knot or the tarp knot and this is probably the most common knot I use when I'm in the field I like to start this one off in my left hand the lead and the main in my right leave yourself a lot of lead rope with this you're going to need it Put it around your anchor point, make a cue, that's your starting point. Take your lead, put it through the loop once, keeping it tight with your thumb, and put it through the loop one more time. But this time, instead of snaking around, I want you to go down, keeping your lead and your main parallel. Then, bring your lead underneath, and you make another loop, which you put the lead through. And the best way to finish off a tarp line knot is by cinching it down hard. By doing that, you take your the end of your lead and your main and really tighten it down. And that gets it ready for usage. Now, the reason why they call it a tarp line knot is because you can adjust it. You can see how handy that would be for uh, adjusting your tarps or adjusting any line or a hammock line. This is a great knot for the field. And again, the sign of a good knot is that it actually gets stronger with the more weight you put on it. If I bring this out to here, I could actually hang from that and this will get tighter. doesn't matter how much you loosen it or bring it up. Next one I'm going to show you is the clove hitch. It's another great anchor knot. There's lots of ways to make this knot, actually. I'm going to show you a couple ways. I like to start this one off. Lead in my right, main in my left. Put it around your anchor point. Make an X. And bring it back up, under. 
See how that is? And then just simply tighten down. That's your clove hitch. That's a great knot. What I like about the clove hitch is that you only need one hand to get it loose. And that may seem silly. It may seem, you know, what's the difference? But I'm telling you, when you're out there and you're messing around with tarps and lines and you got something else in your hand, you're holding something, it's really nice to have a knot that you can anchor down and count on and then untighten with one hand when you're packing up and heading out. So again, that's the clove hitch. The more weight you put on that, the stronger it gets. And when you get to go, you just pull up to loosen it up. It comes right apart. Okay, now I'm going to show you another way to tie a clove hitch. Um, let's say you don't have a way to sling the rope over an anchor object. Let's say you've got a peg, a tent stake, uh, a hitch. Take a loop, make a loop, bring it forward. What I call that is that uh, cobra head, and make a sandwich. See how I did that? I've got a way to slip that over, and I've got a great knot that I don't have to struggle with untying later. You can also use it on the end. So you take your lead and your main. Again, just make a loop, pull it forward, make a sandwich. I've got a nice little knot on the end of my rope that I can tighten up, put over a hitch, let's say. Great anchor point knot, clove hitch. Okay, the last anchor point I'm going to show you is the cowboy knot, or the highwayman's knot. And the reason why they traditionally call it the highwayman's knot is because it was meant to be a good anchor point, but quick to disengage and get away. In case he was robbing a bank, come get his horse and take off. Uh, I like it. It's more, I, I think of it more of as, as a temporary anchor knot. Um, something that I would hang a lantern off a branch or hang something from my hammock because it's so easy to disengage and, uh, and, and yet it's such a strong knot. I like to start this one off, lead in my left, main in my right, and give yourself a lot of lead rope with this. First thing you do is make a small loop, put it over your anchor point, and bring your lead up across that loop, under, and then make a loop with your lead. and then just tighten down by pulling the main. That's nice. And the great thing about this is you can, you know, it's very strong. You can hang anything you need from there. But when it's time to go, there's no more fussing. Just pull that, that loop out. The thing comes right off. High women's knot. Now, like I said, the first four ropes that I showed you are anchor points, and they're the most common, you know, knots out there. You're going to need those the most because, you know, usually you're tying something down. Uh, occasionally you have to join two ropes together and you're going to need a good reef knot to do that. Now if you have two ropes that are the same diameter, like in this case, it's easy. Good reef knot, you make a loop, take your lead, through, around, coming up over and under again. And then just simply pull. That's a great reef knot. Now let's say that I have two ropes that are not the same diameter. I'll take the thicker rope that I want to join. I'll make that loop again, but this time I'm going to take the thinner rope and go under, around again. But this time I'm not going to go down and out. I'm going to put it under the main rope for the original thinner rope. And I'm going to cinch it there. And that's actually a really, really strong knot. In fact, the more pressure you put on that, the greater the strength of the knot's going to be. One last note, and one of the main reasons I chose these as the, as the top five knots is because they work great with no matter what the diameter of the cordage or knot that you're using, including 550 paracord. So whether the, the rope is thick like this, which I use to make it easier for you guys to see me making the knot, or whether it's a, you know, a, a, a small diameter like 550 paracord, all of these work great and function the same.
Okay, the last knot that I'm going to show you is my favorite fishing knot as a bonus. And uh, it seems silly showing this, but I'm kind of surprised how many people are still unaware of this knot. I've been using this knot since I've been about eight or nine years old. It's called the fisherman's knot or the trilene knot. And it's the best knot to use hands down with monofilament line. I'm going to use bigger cordage, obviously, so you can see it and a lot bigger eye loop. I'm going to take my line, snake it through once. Give yourself a lot of lead rope with this. Twice. And wrap it once. Twice. Three times. Four times. Five times. I like to go five. Then bring it back around. Use your lead. Go through the loops that you made originally. And then holding the lead in the main in your other hand, tighten it down and get those knots tight down around that knot. When you're done, it should look like that. And then just snip your excess off. That is the best knot to use for monofilament fishing line. Listen, take an hour away from your TV watching time this week and just learn these knots I showed you. Okay, you'll have them for the rest of your life. Or better yet, teach your kids these knots, and they'll have them for the rest of their life. It'll be one of the greatest gifts you've ever given them. See you later.